Well, hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. It's a privilege to work with you on answering some of your questions. Uh, what we have going on now is a session we call 10 Minutes with a Tech, and it's just a real simple thing. People will watch our videos, they'll ask questions down in the comments, and we review those questions, and we pull them out, and we have an opportunity to answer those questions. Um, and so if you like this kind of a thing where um, you, we, we're going to cover all kinds of different topics on these Q&As. And uh, so make sure you click the bell, subscribe, like, all those types of things. So when these come out, you're able to get that information right away. Maybe there's a piece of information in there that we share that might be what you need or you might know a friend that needs this information. So um, without any further ado, let's jump right into some of these questions. Thanks for watching. So our next question is coming from Dan. Now he's in Oakville, Connecticut. So I want to say hi to you from our side to your side. <laughs> How you doing over there? Um, now he's got a refrigerator question. So I grabbed this out of my pile. Uh, this is a refrigerator cooling unit. Okay, you'll notice that it's missing the, the insulated box part. But uh, I did want to show you this. Now you're going to be seeing this refrigerator cooling unit in an upcoming video. We're going to be slicing and dicing it, so stay tuned for that. If you like me to see these things sliced and diced open, make sure you subscribe and click that bell and you'll, when this gets sliced open and looked inside, you'll be sure and get that. But here's Dan's question. Now he's got a Dometic refrigerator. It's a 2882 and um, he's had a camper for um, over a year with no issues and all of a sudden the refrigerator stopped working and he's done some diagnosis because he's watched some of our other videos. We've got a whole playlist on refrigerator videos and he states that the boiler and the electric both get hot and that there's fans right up in this area and the fans turn on but um, he's saying that um, it's it's not working. It's not insulating. It, it, it's, it's not cooling. Okay. And so um, he says that the boiler over here gets hot. I'm going to probably bring you guys a bit closer. The boiler gets hot, but these coils are not getting hot. And he's like, what's going on? So let me pause you, bring you closer, and I'll do a little show and tell on what, what I think the problem may be. So if you've watched my video on how heat makes cold, and we'll make a reference to that up above as well, you'll, you'll remember how some of these things work. Now, if you're feeling, this is the boiler, okay? If you're feeling the boiler and the boiler is getting hot, but the coils are not getting hot. And now we're talking about after maybe an hour or so of the refrigerator actually working. If this is hot and this is not hot, then I'm gonna say you've got a blockage, okay? That's pretty much a textbook scenario, um, what you would find in the field if you had a blockage. This being hot, this not hot, blockage. Conversely, if this was warm and this was really, really hot, then that would be called a leaker. And a leaker is oftentimes, um, you'll see some yellow sodium chromate, some yellow powdery stuff down here on the bottom. So Dan, if your refrigerator is hot on this side, the fans are coming on up top, and this part down here is not, is, is not hot, that's a blockage. And um, so I'm gonna make another reference to another video. We did one on it was a refrigerator ice dam, but I spent the first 10 minutes or so talking about blockages. Um, this refrigerator, it's a story of ammonia. Um, and like I said, go watch that other video on how heat makes cold and you'll understand the, the, the story of ammonia and how every time ammonia changes states from a liquid to a gas, it's either going to absorb heat or shed heat, depending on which transition it went through. Um, but um, so that's, so your question here, Dan, was, um, the coils in the lower half of the fridge do not get warm as you indicate um, what could be going on. So Dan, if that's your symptom that you're telling me is going on here, then it seems to me that it's a blockage. You could look for ventilation through here, um, but if the fans are coming on, you could look for baffling, like we talked about in another one of our videos, uh, making sure that the baffling is correct. If you can't get good, good airflow through the back side of this, then you're not gonna have an effective uh, refrigerator. But you're telling me that these are not getting hot, and that is an indication of a blockage. Okay, so with that information, you can maybe, you've got an option of replacing or cooling in it. I've got another video on how to replace refrigerator cooling units um, so that might be helpful to you and all these refrigerator videos that I'm talking about you can find on our playlist under the um, refrigerator playlist and we've got quite a few there for you so Dan I hope that this uh, it doesn't sound like it's gonna be good news but I hope that it helps you and just put your mind at ease to know that it isn't it seems to me without me actually being there from what you're telling me it seems like it's a blockage okay do appreciate you watching. Hello from, um, where are we at? We're in Washington and you're in Connecticut. So hello over there. And um, thanks for watching and happy camping. Okay, cheers. Our next question is coming from Zoe Ann. Um, Z-O-E-A-N-N. -N. So Zoe Ann, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. It may be Zoe Ann and the E's not 
sounded, but anyway. Um, yeah, hey, you know what would be fun is if you guys let me know where you're calling from or what your question is, because I um, it's a great question, but I don't know where, so I could have said, hey, from wherever you are to wherever we are. So anyway, uh, Zoe Ann has, I'm going to say Zoe Ann, because that's how it's phonetically sounds to me. So Zoe Ann and her husband, they have an RV, and it's got a suburban SF35 furnace in it. And... Um, their question is, last year they replaced all the parts in it. They replaced the control board, uh, the sail switch, uh, the limit switch, which is in the back back here, um, the thermostat, and the motor. They replaced all these parts, and apparently it worked great. And then um, now it's not working again. And uh, sometimes it'll work, and other times there's a click sound, okay? And... Um, and then it won't start, and sometimes it will start. And so what her husband does is that her husband goes out and flips the on-off switch on the front, and, um, and it'll work for a short time. So the question is, could the problem be the on-off switch or the thermostat? And she says, uh, we've cleaned all the dust off the components and checked all the wiring for tight fits. Okay, so let's talk about that for a second. Um, so I'm collecting carcasses. Normally I would have thrown this stuff away, but I'm actually cataloging it and putting on shelves, inventorying it so I have carcasses to, to play with. Uh, this one has a crack in the heat exchanger, so um, that rendered this totally obsolete. Um, where I want to go with on this one, you're hearing a click, Zoe Ann. So my question is, where is a click coming from? You could hear a click coming from your control board, right? You know what? Let me bring you guys closer, and uh, you don't need to see me. Let me put the camera right here, and I'll point out some stuff that I want you to check out, Zoe Ann, okay? So bear with me. Okay, so I moved everybody up a little bit. Now, your click I was talking about, here's your control board, okay? Now, this black thing right here is a relay, and what this, actually, the relay we're after is the one back here on your board. Is a click coming from this relay back here? Because this relay back here is the one that turns your motor on and off, your blower motor on and off, okay? Um, there could also be a click coming from deep inside on the bottom down here, which is going to be these two solenoids. So is a click coming from these two solenoids? I, I seriously doubt that you're hearing a click from these solenoids if you just turn your furnace on. These solenoids won't engage until the furnace has gone through its pre-purge, okay? So I'm thinking you're hearing your click from your control board. How to determine what the problem is? Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You're going to need your meter, and I'm not going to, I'm just going to take my leads from my meter. So when you travel abroad or you go to a different country, you may not speak their language. And so you walk around with a, a little translator book. And um, it helps you to figure out how to ask questions and things like that. So basically, that's what the meter is. The meter is your translator. We're going to go into a different world here. I'm getting my prongs. We're going to go into a different world. And we need a, a translator to understand what this language is, okay? Now, I'm going to be doing a training course. I know I've been saying this, but now we're starting to get real serious about it. We're gonna be doing a training course on meters and whatnot. So here's your translator. Um, when your furnace clicks, I need you to test a couple points. So you're gonna need a meter to translate what your furnace is telling you. If you understand the language, then you can understand what your furnace is telling you and everybody can be happy. If you're hearing a click, you're going to, you, you said you replaced your motor. Now your motor is in here. It's got the black and the red wire. I want you to find the red wire coming out of your motor. The black wire of the motor should go to ground. I need you to make sure that that's in fact grounded. Okay. And so you need to make sure that your motor is grounded. Now, nice and conveniently, they stick them all on the bottom here. But we need to make sure that your motor is in fact grounded, okay? Because you may have all your connections on the front correctly, but the motor not being grounded is open, okay? So what I want you to do, Zoe Ann, is find your red wire coming out of your motor and follow it, follow it, follow it. And when you get to your control board, it's going to be this red wire right here. Now, on the back of your control board, you're going to have... Uh, I don't know if I'm politically correct or not, but you're going to have a fat prong and a skinny prong, okay? The fat prong is the one that goes to your blower motor, and the skinny prong is the one that's going to be your power coming in. They kind of do that to make it idiot-proof. There's no way to put the skinny prong on the fat terminal, if that makes sense, okay? So it, it kind of helps you be a little bit idiot-proof. And these are the ones I'm talking about. Um, you've got a, a wide one and a skinny one. Technically correct, I could probably say, well, this one's four millimeter and this one's three millimeter, but I'm just going to say fat and skinny. And I know that we can all just go with that. Okay, so what I want you to do is you're going to unplug this red lead 
from the back of the board that says, what does that say, blower? Yeah, it says blower. Now you're gonna need your meter, and what I want you to reference is any ground reference, which would be anything metal on your box. And then I want you to test the pin, the, the, the prong, that your red wire was connected to. And what we're looking for is we need to verify that when this board tells that blower to start, that we're getting 12 volts on that pin. So your red lead, your meter's gonna be in 12 volts DC. Your red lead is gonna be on the larger of the two pins and it's gonna say blower, um, what is that? Silk screened onto the control board. Your black lead, if you wanted to, you could grab this yellow wire, yellow wire is going to be ground, and then you can look to see if you're getting 12 volts at that point. Another thing you can do, because it seems to me that you turn it on or turn it off, you might be resetting the board, but I, I wanna prove that this relay is in fact clicking. We know that it's clicking, but we need to know that 12 volts is passing through it. So it'd be a really good idea to check it right there at that pin. Um, another thing you can try is you can get 12 volts directly to your motor. Um, I like to carry around my little 12 volt tools here and I'll take my little 12 volt battery pack and we've got a little test lead set here that we make. I'll give you a link down below and, and with this test lead kit right here, um, I've got all these little connectors that we can actually connect directly into different things and give power and check power and all these types of things. So I use this kit that I make and that now we sell what I would need you to do is pierce into the black and the red wire here and make sure your motor works. Again, it very well could be that the black wire is not connected to ground back there, okay? Um, because you're getting a click, I'm going to say that this connection here is, is okay. It's getting the signal to start. How do we know that it's getting the signal to start? We know it's getting the signal to start because you're hearing a click, but it's either going to be, and if the fan won't start, then nothing will happen. The first thing that's supposed to happen here is the fan's supposed to start and then it changes states on your sail switch right here. Uh, the board needs to see the sail switch open and then when the fan blower starts, the sail switch closes and the board is monitoring for that condition, okay? So for you, Zoeanne, what I want you guys to check, have your you or your husband, I want you to verify that 12 volts is on this pin right here. Okay, when there is a call for, for heat, okay? Just check right on that pin right there. And your relay may be clicking, but maybe there's something wrong with the brand new board you just put in a year ago, and there's no 12 volts on this pin. If you do have 12 volts on that pin, then the next thing I want you to do is verify that you have a good ground on this motor. If you have a good ground on your motor, and you have 12 volts here, then at that point, what I would call a bench, an in-place bench test, you need to take a known 12 good source and hit the red wire and the black wire plus and minus, give this motor 12 volts, see if the motor will start up like it's supposed to. Um, because the first thing that's supposed to happen is the motor's supposed to start and you're telling me you're hearing a click and no motor, I'm thinking a faulty ground. That just seems to be the first thing. If I was there, that might be one of the first things I would check. Another way you could check that is you could do a continuity check between the black wire feeding your motor and the, the ground case. You could do it that way too. But uh, so anyway, let us know in the comments what you found. Thanks for watching. And um, we will continue collecting these carcasses and we'll continue to make tools to help diagnose and troubleshoot stuff. And like I said, we'll make a link below for this because it's something I'm really proud of that we make. And if you're a technician, you I cannot tell you how many times this has been a, a lifesaver with all these little connectors and things like that. So Zoe Ann and your husband, I don't know your husband's name and I don't know where you guys are, but I uh, hope that this helps and it keeps you guys warm um, and happy camping. Well, folks, that's all the time I have today to answer some of your questions. If this added value to you, please like or subscribe to our channel. Share it with a friend that you feel it could add value to. Um, if you want to support us, we have a Patreon. You can throw some love our way. It does take an effort to put these together, and it just helps offset some of that time that we put into it and some of the equipment that we buy to make it a better production. So thanks for watching. Happy Camper St. Myrby Works. We sure like saying that around here. And from the comments we're getting, we're, we're helping you guys become happy campers too. So um, we'll be doing more of these Q&A videos and make sure you add uh, questions down below. And as a fun little side, let us know where you're, where you're calling in from or whatever. And we'll give a shout out to those. It's kind of fun to hear where everybody's at all over the world, really. It's kind of exciting. So this is Darren on behalf of Myrby Works. We want to thank you for your time. It's a privilege.